everyone, it's Tammy, and I'm going to teach you guys how to make a cute little rosette using paper. And I don't have an example here to show you, but you will see it here in just a little minute. And I will try to put it in my picture first. And you need a 12 inch piece of paper and you want to cut it at about an inch and a half, depending on how big you want your rosette to be. And I will show you what I mean. I'm going to do this one at an inch and a half. I don't like it too much bigger than that. Sometimes it gets a little unruly. And it's also nice if you have a scoreboard for this. So I'm using just a Martha Stewart scoreboard. I could use my score on my cutter, but I'm going to be cutting every quarter of an inch. So for this particular project, I, I like to have a scoreboard a little bit better. And for this particular scoreboard, it's every black mark at the top. I'm just going to score and you don't want to push too too hard because you don't want to rip the paper and I find if I use designer series paper or thinner cardstock it is better than using like the regular Stampin' Up! cardstock or something that's thick. It doesn't work quite as well. Oops did I mess up? No I just missed one. And there's that one. <laughs> so it's just kind of tedious it's not hard at all but I'm just scoring on every quarter inch and there may be other ways to do this I don't know this is the way that I learned many moons ago And I know I've tried to make some really big ones, and I know that if I get too much bigger than an inch and a half, it's a little bit harder to, to work with. Okay, so then what you do is you accordion fold this. So you go, you fold it up, you fold it down, or some people call it mountain and valley folds. You just, you just fold it up and then down, and then up and then down, and you do that the whole length of the paper and somehow I got off a little bit right here and that's okay and I think my husband is home oh, I'm gonna have to pause this I will be back okay so then I'm going to just finish folding this and it's just up and down up and down up and down up and down And if it's not perfect, it's okay. It will all come out in the wash. It won't really matter. I mean, it should, technically, it should stack right on top of each other. But as you can see, mine is not <laughs> stacking exactly right. And you don't have to use your bone folder to score them or anything. <laughs> And I don't know whoever came up with this or how they thought of it, but it's pretty neat. My hand kind of gets sore, actually, if you want to know the truth. And you could let it go and just continue to fold it, too. It's not going to hurt anything. You don't have to hold it. Boom, boom, ba -doom, boom, ba -doom. And you know what I didn't get out was my hot glue gun. That is the best way to do this is with a hot glue gun too. So once you have it all folded like that, I just kind of pinch it to make sure it's folded and then I just let it go. And then I'm going to take a punch with just a circle on it. You could do a heart, you could do whatever you wanted. I'm just doing a circle and just some scrap paper and I'm cutting two little circles out. And then what you do is you take one end and you put glue on it and you want glue that's going to be strong and quick drying. 
So I'm going to do this instead of hot glue, and hopefully this is going to work. I have not tried this art glitter glue on it. Then you just take the sides and you push them together so that the two, or take the ends and push them together. So the two ends meet and you form like a little bracelet. So see how those are glued together right here where my fingers are. And then there's some excess glue. I'm just going to take that off. So together they form the mountain of this little piece. And I'm just going to let it glue, let it stay for a second. This is where the hot glue comes in handy. So if you have a hot glue gun, you might want to use that, just a little strip of it. And then what you do, this is very weird, and it's a little bit hard sometimes to do it the first couple or, couple or three times. You just kind of play with it to get it to fan out <laughs> like that. So you just push, the, push one end in while you're taking the other end and pushing it down. So it's, it's very weird. And you could do it either way. It doesn't matter which side you have out. I've already pushed this one in, so I'm going to just leave it that way. But if I wanted the other end out, you could do it that way too. It doesn't matter because the other side is going to have that end out. And then you just have to carefully hold it. And this is where the glue gun comes in handy. And put your glue around here. And then take your little guy and put him on and I just hold him for I don't know 30 seconds or so even with the glue gun I hold him for a little bit just to make sure that he stays and it's you have to do both sides even if you think oh gosh I don't need to do both sides trust me you'll want to do both sides because the minute you don't it will fall apart And then so carefully turn it over to the other side, especially, yeah, this isn't exactly holding, so I might have to still get out my glue gun. We'll see. I'm getting some of that glue down here in the little crevices. I'm going to put my little... So you don't want this little dot piece that you're doing, you don't want it to be too big. But you don't want it to be too small either. So, I mean, this is a three-quarter inch, inch circle. That's a, it's perfect. It's fine. You could do two and layer them up on top of each other if you want to do a smaller one. So this one I said was an inch and a half. If I did an inch one, I could put it like on top of this one. Oh, see how that moved? <laughs> I'm hoping I didn't just move the bottom. It's probably because there's so much glue on here that it's kind of not drying as quickly as it usually does. Because this art glitter glue usually dries really quickly. I hope I didn't mess up that side. I'm going to try to peek. Okay, I'm just going to hold it here. Like I said, usually if you use a hot glue gun, it works out perfectly for this. But it's kind of nice to know there's an alternative if I want to use something different. And then if you wanted to put like a straw or something, you could. Or like let's say you wanted to put a pencil. You could do that. You could either tape it or you could glue it however you want it to be. If you want it to be permanent, obviously you could glue it. If I wanted it to be this one, I wouldn't want it to be permanent. At least not on that end because this is one of those pencils that you use the lead and then you stick it in the bottom so I wouldn't want something to block it. It's still kind of moved a little bit this side. But I think it worked. I'm going to just, well you know what, I don't even think I'm going to. It's a little bit cockeyed only because my little middle came a little apart but now that it's glued on there pretty good I don't really want to mess with it, but it looks really cute. I mean, that's how you make the little rosette. And you can make a smaller one. Let's go ahead and do one more just to, let's do an inch one. My 
husband's waiting to eat, so I guess I should hurry, but <laughs> I'm doing something. I'm busy. So just do every quarter of an inch. And like I said, this is an inch, whereas that one was an inch and a half. So I would say probably anywhere between these two sizes would be fine. I don't know if I'd go much smaller than this. But give it a try. I mean, all you're doing, it's just paper. So if you mess up, it's just paper. Oops. I'm getting too excited on my scoring and I'm missing the line. And I know you guys can't see all of this over here. I'm sorry. It's just the same old thing. I'm just, every quarter of an inch, I'm scoring it. Everywhere I'm scoring it. Okay, so once I have that, and same thing. I got a little crazy with my scoring marks, so I'm just trying to be careful. Ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. And of course, you can use any color to do any flower. Um, even if you did one-sided designer series paper or one-sided cardstock, it would be fine. I mean, just the other side of the flower would just be white, so. Or rosette, I guess. It's not a flower. I'm trying to get it, so I just get it all together. There we go. I don't know why I like to do that, but I just like to make sure that it's all folded together. Clearly this one's a little lopsided, but it, you'll see it doesn't make any difference. So I'll take my glue and I'll do the same thing. Put it on one end, take the other side of the ribbon and put it here, or paper, and hold those two together. And while I'm doing that, I'll get out my punch. And I will punch this twice. Even though it's smaller, I'm still going to use this size. And if you want to use a smaller size, you can. So then you take one end and you pull it out while you're pushing the other end in. And then you just bring it together like a beautiful flower. Then you take your hot glue and you glue it, which is way better, I promise you. I mean, this is working, but it's way better to use the hot glue. So, and that could be just because I'm not very patient. I can be patient on some things. But on other things, mm -mm, I have no patience. I see the glue coming out the edge over here. That's okay. It's so cute. Gosh, I desperately need to do my fingernails. But I'm having so much fun crafting, I really don't want to take the time to do my fingernails. <laughs> so, once you get that done, take it to the other side. 
do the same thing over there. I'm trying to do it better this time. You could make a little flower garden and make all different sizes and see how that's just a half an inch, but it makes a huge difference. So you could even go a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch and still probably see a difference. And then if you want to, you can like glue those together and then put a straw or something. Here's one I did with a different kind of a rosette. Put the straw in between, squish the straw down, put them in between. Super cute. Or you could leave them separate like that. Whatever you like. And if you mess up on one of them, like that isn't centered and it kind of bugs me a little bit, that's when you could do this and nobody could tell the difference. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Even without a straw down the center, I am being a rebel. So I'll put that there. You guys knew I was a bad, bad girl. And then you could put this on a card or whatever you'd like. I'm probably going to use this in a loaded envelope or in a pocket letter because it's so thick. I really wouldn't want this to go through the mail on a letter. But um, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with it, but I like it. And I'm going to use something and I'm going to do it with this cute set I have over here of these little hedgy hogs. And I, have, I haven't used them yet, so I need to get on that. And then I found this cute little paper I thought I might use too. So we shall see what I come up with. But I just wanted to show you how to do that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.